Israel's government has no red lines, no more. And it should be held responsible and punished. Since the beginning of the aggression, there was a bloodshed. And given this massacre, that took place tonight and having the I decided to stop my visit and to go back home so that I can be with my people during this painful situation and hard times. I've agreed with my brothers in Egypt and Jordan to cancel the summit that was supposed to take place with President Biden. And I call on everyone for unity and we call everyone to remain calm because this will only benefit the enemies of the Palestinian people. It's been more than 75 years of pain and occupation and crimes and violations against and violations of international law while the world remains silent. We have warned the international community of the consequences of the crimes committed by Israel. And I demand now during these difficult times to hold the governments of Israel responsible and to provide international protection for our people. Dozens of decisions have been taken and made, and many resolutions have been taken but have never been implemented because the United States does not want to implement it. This aggression should stop, and those crimes should stop as well. We will not allow for another Nakba during the 21st century, and we will not accept that our people will be forced to move again and displaced. They will remain on their land, and we will not move. We will not leave. We will not leave, no matter the sacrifices that we have to make. We will exert all our efforts and do all what we can so that we can stop this bloodshed in Gaza. Any words or any statements except about ceasefire will not be accepted, and the Security Council should shoulder its responsibility and should take the initiative to issue a resolution to condemn this crime and to stop the aggression immediately. We call our people our to, for unity during these decisive moments. This is a dangerous moment. We can only face this situation and to be able to stand by each other's side. I salute all our people in Gaza Strip, our heroes, and everywhere. And I tell them that the Israeli plans to displace you and make you leave your land will never happen, and we will face it, and we will stop it, and we respect the position of all the countries who stood by us, all the Arab countries that are against the displacement uh, do not allow it. We appreciate their position. Our people will not surrender and we will make victory at the end. Peace be upon all our martyrs and speed recovery for the wounded and we will free the prisoners. We will be on continuous meeting as of now to take or make the right decisions in order to stop those massacres 
against our people. The meetings will continue in order to make all the required decisions and the decisions that you deem fit. And we demand from the world a world that has always been silent. It's time to take action. It's time to speak. It's time to say something, but you cannot remain silent as if the Palestinian people does not exist and their blood has no value. Everyone is silent. We will never accept this. We will never accept this from now on. And we will not surrender. But what is important is that we will stay on our land. We will not leave our land. And we will not allow anyone to force us to leave or to displace us as they did in the past. The past will not repeat itself. 1948 and 1967 events will not happen again. Okay, that was Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas speaking after that Israeli air raid on a hospital in Gaza in which 500 people were killed. Let's bring in Imran Khan, who joins us from occupied East Jerusalem. Imran... Correct me if I'm wrong, but up until this point, we haven't publicly seen the Palestinian Authority president. We've only received statements. So what do you make of his comments now, 12 days into this war? Well, he had to speak. He had to speak after that hospital bombing. There's no way that he couldn't issue a statement, particularly after he cancelled his meeting with President Joe Biden. That meeting is now completely cancelled, uh, according to reports we're hearing. Um, the Jordanians aren't going to be meeting and the, uh, the um, Egyptians aren't going to be meeting. He also knows the mood on the streets of the occupied West Bank. Everybody in the occupied West Bank is supporting uh, the people of Gaza and everything that they're going through. He couldn't get this ceasefire. You heard him speak there, blaming the Israelis squarely uh, for uh, the attack. Uh, but he also talked about a ceasefire. That's something he hasn't been able to get. So clearly he feels incredibly frustrated uh, and feels like there is nothing to talk to the Americans about. So addressing his people has become uh, the priority here. Now, remember, he doesn't have any contacts with Hamas. He doesn't have any contacts with the Israelis. The international community is really the only way he has of uh, trying to put pressure on Israel uh, to either maintain, a, either start and maintain a ceasefire uh, or actually just entirely stop this war. But now he's not meeting with President Joe Biden. So that's an avenue that's been cut off to him. I think he feels like he is cut off from the uh, international community, that he has to now rely on the Arab world. He mentioned uh, the Arab world there. He said that um, it's now up to the Arab world to try and put pressure uh, on the Israelis to try and stop uh, what they're doing. So it was incredibly important that he was seen after everything that's gone on. And remember, this has only all happened in the last, say, six or seven hours. This is all very fresh. So he needed to speak to the Palestinian people. That's what he's done. He's got his message out there, but it's not going to have any impact on the Israelis. The president, US President Joe Biden is still going to come and meet with Israeli officials, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's firmly backing the Israelis, and it doesn't look like any ceasefire is going to come particularly in the immediate future. Imran, this comes after tension between Palestinians and security forces in Ramallah. They're angry at the Palestinian Authority. That's absolutely right. And though the Palestinian Authority security forces actually cracked down on all of those protesters, they came out just as those pictures that we all saw uh, from the hospital came out. It angered them. They needed to come out in the streets and show their support for the people of Gaza. That spilled over into violence. Just goes to show you how people are feeling. Everybody is feeling like they are under attack if they're Palestinian. Doesn't matter if you live in the occupied West Bank or if you live in the Gaza Strip. There is a unity 
on the Palestinian street right now that we haven't seen in a very long time. And that's why they came out on the streets. My colleagues in Ramallah will be able to give you a much more deeper analysis of exactly what took place. But uh, I can tell you that I'd spent about a week and a half, uh, about seven, eight days in uh, Ramallah just before I came to occupy East Jerusalem. People were, people were afraid that they would be next. That seems to have now changed. They're out in the streets showing solidarity because it's not about them being next anymore. It's about them being Palestinians. But, Emily, I have to say, we're in the middle of one of the biggest information wars that I've actually seen uh, covering this region for about 23 years now. Um, the Israelis have come out and said uh, that the bombing that took place in the hospital was Islamic Jihad. Not just the Israelis, but Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, President Isaac Herzog, uh, Benny Gantz, the Israeli army are all blaming Islamic Jihad. Islamic Jihad, for their part, have said it wasn't them. MSF, several other people, including the Anglican Church, have also said that this was an Israeli attack. Now, there is precedent for what the Israelis are actually doing. If you recall, our colleague, um, Shireen Abu Akhle, journalist for Al Jazeera Arabic, when she was killed, uh, the Israelis, in the first few hours, blamed Palestinian gunmen for this. They were very clear. They said this was a Palestinian gunman uh, that actually shot Shireen Abu Akhle. A couple of days later, they changed their story and they actually admitted it. We've seen the Israelis do this. When something like this happens, they muddy the waters. They try and push uh, the blame onto the Palestinians. Riyad Mansour, who was just speaking at the United Nations, uh, uh, United Nations there, he actually also squarely blamed the Israelis for this as well. Prime Minister Mahmoud Abbas, in his statement, blamed the Israelis as well. So there is this information war that's going on, but by no means is that unusual for the Israelis. They will come out in the initial stages and muddy the waters. However, we are hearing uh, from Islamic Jihad and several others, like I've just said, that this was an Israeli attack. Imran, thanks so much for breaking it all down for us, as always. Imran Khan from Occupied East Jerusalem.